Before we get started, just a reminder to hit the subscribe button below for more videos on how to strengthen your profile, get accepted to your dream schools, and much, much more. I'm your host today. I'm Elias Miller. If we haven't met yet, I'm a frequent live streamer here at College Vine. Uh, I'm a 2016 Harvard grad, did a master's degree in orchestral conducting of all the specific things uh, at the University of Michigan that I finished last May. Anyway, presentation is not about me, of course. Uh, so let's get right into the subject that you all tuned in to learn more about, which is how to get into Duke. As you all probably know, Duke's campus community, pretty well known for a number of things, whether it's camping outside uh, basketball games in tents, always for that big Duke versus North Carolina game, um, UNC game. Duke students invented an invisibility cloak. Uh, they rep their student societies in black graduation gowns and sunglasses, campus home to the very popular chapel and also a large lemur center. Um, which, of course, if you visit Duke, you have to take the time uh, to make sure you go see that. Or if you're a student there, um, make sure you check out the Lemur Center. I've heard, I've never been, but I've heard it's totally an amazing thing. What are we going to talk about today? Well, a number of different things. We're going to do a broad overview. We're going to talk about how to go about maximizing your chances. We'll discuss the admissions process at Duke, how that works. Um, and then we'll go through what your admissions profile should look like in terms of academics, extracurriculars, and essays, if you're hoping for a chance to get into Duke. Just a quick overview of Duke itself. Well, it's located in Durham, North Carolina, with a very low acceptance rate of just 7.8%. Uh, it's ranked number 12 by US News this year, uh, right in that top, top echelon of the most selective schools in the country. Uh, it's in the NCAA Atlantic Coast Conference. Of course, it is D1. Very, very famous football and basketball teams, but other fantastic teams as well. Um, the early action deadline. Is it early action? I do believe it's early decision at Duke, no? In any case, it doesn't matter because it's past, people. Um, I'm pretty sure it's early decision, not early action. But uh, it's over. So for this year, it's not going to matter. Uh, you've got that regular decision deadline coming up uh, January 4th. Uh, or, you know, for a coming year, you'll have to check out what those deadlines are. Maybe they'll stay the same. They may move slightly. Um, so we'll see what's, what's going on next year. In terms of that 7.8 acceptance rate, you can see that a whopping 41,651 students applied last year, of which Duke accepted only 3,229. So a very, very small group. And of course, Many of those 41,000 plus applicants were definitely qualified to attend Duke. Um, it can always come down to very minute things or even sometimes arbitrary things. These decisions are, are really, really tricky to make. Within this uh, graphic, um, you can break down these things further. About 5% of admissions um, were given uh, to athletes, another portion giving to legacies. Uh, but apparently athletes actually make up eight to nine percent of the incoming class. If you are not in either of those two privileged categories, your actual acceptance rate is lower than 7.8 percent. Um, and that's going to be true at, you know, all schools, unfortunately, or at least schools that, you know, give privilege to legacies and athletes, which are, you know, most schools. Just some basic things about the schools at Duke to which you may apply. Duke has two primary um uh, undergraduate programs. There's the Trinity College of Arts and Sciences uh, and the Pratt School of Engineering. I'm sure some of you will ask me about computer science because it's a one that it's one that comes up all the time. Duke has two computer science related majors, right? So there's a computer science program that's housed in the Trinity College of Arts and Sciences, and then there's a computer engineering program that's housed in the Pratt School of Engineering. If you're concerned about the differences between those two majors, um, feel free to. Uh, uh, ask in the chat and I'll do my best to explain it as, as best as best as I know it's you know there's a number of schools that have this kind of discrepancy between the two different kinds of programs um, of course many different graduate schools to choose from uh, <laughs> if you're watching and you're applying to graduate school or thinking down the line very famous graduate schools in a variety of fields we've got a number of them listed below okay let's talk about maximizing chances there's about three main categories of things you can do to maximize your chances. Of course, the first is to have a great academic profile. The next is to write awesome essays. Uh, and the final, to apply early decision. Of course, 
A little bit late this year to be applying early decision. You've missed the deadline, unfortunately, but if you're going to apply to Duke in a future year, um, ED, definitely an option available to you. ED always um, dramatically increases your chances at you know any school that offers it. Um, let's talk a little bit more about each one. So building a strong profile, well, it's pretty critical to take rigorous and challenging courses when they're available. Of course, you're not going to want to take so many rigorous and challenging courses that you can't keep up. You know, having bad grades, not good, but you know, having good, perfect or near perfect grades with a rigorous or challenging course load, that's going to look excellent. Of course, having a well-balanced schedule um, can look good as well. In general, we recommend, you know, four years of English, three or four years of math, um, you know, taking some natural sciences, taking a foreign language, uh, and, uh, you know, social studies also in that three plus year category for each of those latter components. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're having a well, uh, a well-balanced diet of different kinds of courses, whether they're arts and humanities, um, or more STEM related or somewhere in between. Write all the essays. Uh, so, you know, Duke has three essay prompts. We'll talk more about them later. Um, the first one is required. Um, it's a Why Duke essay. Uh, you definitely have to write that one. But there are two optional prompts, one on diversity, one on identity. If these prompts apply to you at all, we strongly recommend you writing them. We find that um, writing the additional essays, you know, helps you uh, not only showcase your writing prowess, but also help your admissions officers get to know you and, you know, get to understand your identity better. Also can help make you a more memorable applicant. Basically, if you can write the optional prompts and you can do a good job on them, definitely do that. Um, it'll look like you're taking your application more seriously, may make your application more impressive, may give your admissions officers a, a fuller picture of who you are as a student. So yeah, that would be my advice there. Um, okay, finally, applying early decision. The early decision acceptance rate is a whopping 18.4%, much higher than the 6 0.4% for regular decision. Of course, some of this is the quality of the applicants. On average, the pool of people applying early are slightly more qualified than the people applying regular. They're the people that have, you know, gotten all their stuff together in time, you know, early in November, um, and they're really serious about applying to this given school, obviously. So in general, that pool will be slightly better qualified, but that in and of itself does not count for the dramatic difference between these rates. What's accounting for that is the fact that early decision is binding. That means that if you apply early decision to Duke and you're accepted, you're going to have to go. Now, there are some, you know, very specific extenuating circumstances that might um, not allow you to go, some kind of health issue, some family issues, maybe financial things. If you're worried about financial aid, you want more options, and you don't want to be locked into anything, right? If you're locked in, a school knows that you're going, they're not incentivized to offer you merit-based scholarship to get you to come. Uh, so, you know, if you're worried about money, ED, probably not the option. If you're not super worried about money, ED is going to massively increase your acceptance chances um, because the school can count on you showing up and knows that you're coming, good for their yield, knows that you're really serious about attending that school. So yeah, obviously not in the cards this year anymore for those of you applying this cycle, the, de the, the deadline is passed, but for anyone applying in the coming years, uh, definitely consider uh, ED if you're interested in going to Duke. I should say also, you know, part, part of it's luck, right? So um, just have to hope and pray somewhat. Uh, we'll cover all these kinds of little bits and pieces of uh, all the things we mentioned in the maximizing chances section uh, later on. Let's talk a little bit about the admissions process. So um, at Duke, from all of our applicants and you know our massive surveys that we've done on people who've attended Duke and other schools in the past, um, we have found that Duke basically has this breakup um, of considerations. 45% uh, on academics, uh, that includes grades and test scores, 25% on your essays, 20% on your extracurricular resume, and 10% other stuff. That could include demographics, it could include interviews, uh, if you do an alumni interview, uh, it could include, yeah, just other extenuating uh, factors. Academically qualified, right? This is the 45% bucket. It's the large, uh, admission, uh, largest section of the admissions process. There is some demographic adjustment. Um, uh, you know, Duke is race conscious in, in its admissions, so race and, race and ethnicity may play a small role. Um, gender can can matter sometimes, usually dependent on major, right? Like if there are fewer women in a given STEM program, as unfortunately there often are, the school may in be incentivized 
to um, go slightly easier on, on academic qualifications necessary for women applying to that certain program. Granted, this is not, never going to make like a huge difference, generally speaking, um, but you know, can give you a slight bump, slight boost somehow. Geography can also matter. Oftentimes schools are incentivized to take more students from their given region. So, you know, if you're from North Carolina, that can help you a little bit. Additionally, if you're from a state that's underrepresented in admissions, for instance, maybe one of the Dakotas, I'm guessing, um, that can also uh, be a slight boost to your application. So these are just small uh, factors that may determine exactly what level uh, of academic qualification is, is needed. Again, it's a very nuanced process and it's it's opaque. We don't quite know how Duke admissions officers are adjusting for all these variables. As you can see from the chart I've got up, Duke is, is a pretty diverse place. We can we can list them off. 45% Caucasian, 29% people of Asian descent, 12% um, Black or African American, 12% Latino or Latinx, and 2% Native American. How about uh, gender? Duke skews, I guess, currently just ever so slightly male. Uh, and in terms of geography, Duke has a fair number of international students. Uh, 11.5 doesn't put it in like along with the, the the schools that have the most international students. Some schools do have, you know, double this number, but it's a fair number. That said, the majority of Duke students are domestic. And if you're an international applicant, you're going to have to have a very strong profile to make sure you stand out. What about your extracurricular uh, profile? Um, well, ideally, your extracurricular activities will align uh, with your major. So uh, basically, you know, if you're applying for computer science at Duke uh, and you have a lot of extracurricular activities in related fields, say you, you know, organized some hackathons, maybe you did a cyber patriot, you know, cybersecurity competition, and that'll help you build a, a much stronger profile overall. Um, of course, you know, this is, you know, when you discuss your extracurricular pro profile, whether it's in your resume or if it's in um, your essays or even if it's in, uh, you know, recommendation letters that you're, that people have written for you, ideally, this is a, a chance for you to demonstrate, uh, you know, the amount of time you've committed to these activities. It's a, it's a way for you to explain the passion you feel for these uh, activities and, and uh events and things and clubs and hobbies. Uh, you can show consistency if these are activities you've pursued for a long period of time. And of course, sometimes you can show uniqueness if you've pursued particular niche hobbies. College essays uh, make up about 30% of your college application, uh, at least to Duke. Um, different schools require different amounts of topics. Obviously we saw uh, Duke is asking for specifically three, one of which is mandatory, two of which are optional. This is the most significant personal component of your application, right? So like your essays are the chance to really talk about who you are as a person, who you are as a student, um, for you to explain to your admissions officers. College essays, really important chance for you to discuss who you are, uh, what you care about, how you respond to different situations. Why is this important? Well, it's important because admissions officers decide acceptance is partially based on if they think you're a good fit for their given school, right? I mean, um, that decision, it's a very complex one, right? And admissions officers may have, you know, <laughs> individual opinions on this. But in general, admissions officers want students who are going to excel at their school. And the students who are going to excel at their school aren't just students who perform really well in high school but also students who maybe really well align with the values of a given institution, maybe are deeply intellectually curious <clears throat> and are gonna really pursue um, and use the school's resources to the best of their abilities. Um, maybe students who are gonna embark on lots of intellectual exploration. Um, maybe students who they think socially are gonna fit in really well for whatever reason. Basically, these admissions essays are a chance for you to you know, talk yourself up, but also explain who you are and hopefully admissions officers will, you know, really get to know you as a person uh, and decide whether or not you, you'd be a good addition to their um, campus culture and campus community. Um, so, of course, you know, <laughs> don't be too self-deprecating in your essays um, and don't be too, you know, fact driven in your essays. Don't just write essays based on, you know, where you list a bunch of facts about yourself or about why you want to attend a specific school, you know, uh, talking about what's good about the school. We'll talk about this in a moment when we get into the Why Duke essay. You're going to want to actually explain personal things about yourself, make yourself vulnerable, talk about yourself in a way that makes you unique. Of course, there are some other variables. These account for about 10% of the uh, admissions process at Duke. Um, your high school can, ma can matter. You know, some high schools have previous, uh, previously existing relationships with a given school. At my alma mater at Harvard, I tend to think of um, at Boston Latin School as having, being sort of a feeder school for Harvard. Um, you know, there are some local North Carolina schools that send a lot of students every year to Duke. Um, that can help. 
uh, of course, you can have a unique identity. Um, and some of these may be things that you know caused you additional uh, trials, tribulations, struggles uh, in your high school or uh, life previously, generally. Um, so these are all variables that can, um, well, they're just variables that admissions officers will consider um, along with you know demographic variables and geographical vari variables and gender variables and the like, um, right? These are all just you know small things that may help admissions officers get uh, a sense of who you are and you know factor into their decision making process. Of course, unfortunately, these are parts of your application that you know you don't have control over. Um, there are many things like that. Okay, how do the admissions committees work? Well, there's three parts. There's your primary reader, your secondary reader, and your admissions committee. Your primary reader is the first person <laughs> who sees your application, kind of by definition, right? Your primary reader is generally your regional admissions officer. So Duke will have you know, a regional admissions officer for your given area, which may include a couple states. Uh, or one state, I don't know, depends how populous your states are. And uh, um, that admissions officer will read your application as well as all the applications of the other applicants from your region. Okay, you got a few secondary readers at Duke and this goes, uh, it's the same at, at most um, selective or larger schools. At Duke, there's gonna be three or four more readers. So in total, there are gonna be four or five um, individual readers who check over your application. It's really critical you win these people over because these are the people who will advocate or vouch for your application in front of the larger admissions committee. Um, the larger admissions committee, that's the group of admissions officers who ultimately will decide the status of your application. They'll decide whether to defer you if you applied early or reject you or accept you or waitlist you at the end of the process. Um, and uh, it's really critical that all your readers, primary and secondary, get to know you, remember your application. You want them going up there and you know saying, this is why this student should be able uh, to be accepted here at Duke. Okay, let's talk about admissions profile. So how do you build a strong application for Duke? Well, three things. Let's start with academics. First things first, you're gonna need some good standardized test scores. Now, Duke may be test optional this year, so you, know, you don't need need them, but if you don't submit a test score, the rest of your application has to compensate for it, whether because you got too low a test score to submit or you, know, you don't want to submit it because it's too low or because you weren't able to take the test due to you know, COVID related issues or whatever, um, you're still going to need a really strong rest of your application. So don't think that this is a free pass. Um, there are some discrepancies between reported 25th and 75th percentile SAT scores. I've seen 1450 as a 25th percentile. I've also seen 1500, 1560, 1570 as the 75th percentile. Um, in terms of ACT, the sources I checked were all basically the same. I saw that 33, 25th percentile, uh, and 35 is the 75th. It's a very narrow range. Now, does that mean that if you have below uh, that 1500 uh, on the SAT or below the 33 on the ACT that you shouldn't submit? Uh, not necessarily. Sometimes not submitting if you've taken the test will do some damage to your application. Um, so uh, I'd knock about 60 points off the 25th percentile, and that may be 1450 or 1500 for the SAT. Anyway, you know, below a 1400 on the SAT probably wouldn't be sending. Um, and, you know, maybe knock a couple points, two or three off the ACT uh, below, below a 30 or so, even below a 31, probably wouldn't be sending. Um, it's it's not it's going to do more damage to your application. It may sort of just disqualify you. Um, you know, again, no no schools really admit to having these hard and fast uh, thresholds on GPA and SAT and ACT. But in reality, these schools do have thresholds, and if you're below the threshold, you have a very very low chance of getting in. Of course, you know demographics and you know all those other things that we talked about later also you know a, a factor in a bit. All those extenuating circumstances so you know you can consider those as well but in general the good guideline is 60 points off the low 25th percentile sat score two to three points off the act if you want more information on that do check out um vinay's video on test optional applications this year he has a lot of awesome empirically driven conclusions to share with you on whether or not you should submit various scores um okay sat subject tests I should say also on the subject of SAT and ACT that in reality, sometimes those averages can be a little bit higher up if you're not legacy or, or if you're not an athlete. Because again, legacy and athletes do play into those categories. Um, so that can also shift up those scores slightly, making it even more competitive for the rest of us to get in. 
Okay, subject tests, not necessary this year. Don't worry, people. If you haven't taken them, if you don't have good scores, don't worry. That said, if you did have an opportunity to take some, you got a good score or a good couple scores, they can make up for a low SAT score. They can also make up for bad grades, particularly let's say you didn't do too well in AP Chemistry, but you nailed the 800 on that Chemistry SAT2. Uh, you know, that can show that in fact you did master the materials. Maybe you just had, you know, some struggles in class for whatever reason. No big deal. GPA, you're going to need a really high GPA to get into these schools. And I, I say this to, to the kids I advise all the time. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, if you have a B, even just one or a couple, it makes it really, really hard to get into these top 15, top 10 schools. Um, you know, if you have a B or a couple Bs or a C, um, the Ivies may just be out of reach unless you've done totally amazing things um, uh, elsewhere and have perfect scores on, on everything. Ideally, you're going to want a 3.9 or above. That is unweighted. Um, uh, don't worry about weighted GPA. Colleges are really not going to look at your weighted GPAs. They're going to look at your unweighted GPAs uh, and then you know try to determine their own kind of weighting system based on your uh, course rigor. There are situations where a student has lower than, you know, perfect, lower than 3.9, somewhere in those threes, whatever, but it's because they didn't do very well maybe you know at the beginning of their high school career maybe they did poorly as a freshman uh but then performed consistently better throughout um or sometimes there's a situation where a student had a really specific struggle in a given semester or a given year it could be illness related um this year it could be covid uh it could be you know some other extenuating circumstance that caused you to perform less as well during a given short period of time if you can explain a positive upward progression in high school or you can explain a specific grade or a specific semester's worth of grades um uh that can help you make up for a you know a gpa that's a little bit lower than 3.9 for instance okay let's talk about extracurriculars so again extracurriculars they're your chance to demonstrate excellence in a particular domain also your chance to you know express your passion for a specific pursuit um, the things that are going to look the best in terms of extracurriculars are leadership positions right if you can take on leadership positions if you can be a treasurer if you can be a president vice president those are all good positions high level awards are really excellent i talked to all my musicians out there and i know that there are some of you in the chat shout outs to musicians feel free to shout it out if you play an instrument how do you show that you're good at an instrument unfortunately it is not by submitting an arts supplement if your schools offer art supplements feel free to submit them but your average admissions officer isn't going to know much they may send it off to the orchestra or band leader or whoever uh, conductor whoever it may be um, but uh, you know it's a bit of an opaque process if you want to show your admissions officers right away that you're talented at music at art at writing show them the competitions you've won show them your awards um, those really quantify your achievements in your various fields um, and uh, you know if you have a chance to submit some essays to competitions submit poems to competitions participate in a music competition submit your artwork to a competition whatever that may be if you're doing computer science do cyber patriot do competitive coding if you're really good at latin do the national latin competition there's so many math competitions whatever it may be some high level awards go a really long way uh, and prove to admissions officers that you're you know, serious in your respective fields. Finally, impressive projects um, could be uh, just a ton of volunteering hours. It could be a specific project that you created. Uh, maybe you started a, a business or you started a nonprofit. Maybe you wrote a novel. Uh, maybe you <laughs> went to Olympic trials, Wh whatever. I guess that kind of goes in the high level awards category, but in general, Really impressive, especially self-driven projects go a long way in terms of building your extracurricular profile. Uh, okay, we did extracurriculars. Let's talk about essays. We may do a more uh, substantial Duke essays presentation down the line. As you know, I love doing those, so I, I may advocate for doing one in which I'll go really into depth. Maybe I'll write some essays for you guys. You know, you all know if you've been watching my streams that I do love writing college essays. Let's talk about prompt one. Uh, all right, 200 words, it is required. Please share with us why you consider Duke a good match for you. Is there something in particular about Duke's academic or other offerings that attract you? This is a really standard why Duke essay, um, and uh, or why college X essay, I guess, would be the, um, the general description. Okay, the keys for a successful Y School X essay 
um, don't just list facts. This is only 200 words, so you're not gonna have a chance to get into everything, right? In a general Y School X essay, you might talk about specific classes you wanna take. You might talk about specific extracurriculars in which you wanna participate. You might chat about location if it's important to you. Maybe if it's Duke, you'll talk about how you really wanna tent uh, the annual Duke versus Tar Heels game. We're thinking now specifically programs Duke offers, could be academics, could be research opportunities, could be extracurriculars. Remember that just saying Duke has fantastic computer science courses and I'm excited to take course X, course Y, course C. Duke has fantastic extracurricular offerings and I'm excited to participate in club A, club B, club C. Duke has fantastic sports teams and I'm excited to go tent the annual game. You didn't do it. <laughs> you didn't do the job because even though it showed that you did your research, which is key, you wanna make sure you've done your research before you answer this prompt, um, you didn't say anything specific about you. Uh, it's really not enough to just list a course, although by all means, list a course you want to take. You need to also explain why that course um, uh, is going to matter for you. Um, why is that course going to introduce you to new uh, subject areas and expand your mind in interesting ways? Why is that course going to help you develop knowledge that will be critical in your future career path? Why is that course, basically, why is that course going to be meaningful to you? Why is that extracurricular going to be meaningful to you? By explaining why the Duke's offerings about what you're, uh, uh, what you're describing are meaningful to you specifically, you personalize this essay. Uh, you make the essay not just facts, you make it say something profound about you as a person, you as a student, you as an applicant, and remember, that's key when building a connection with your admissions officers who are not robots, in fact, they are people, uh, and they can be influenced by your writing. Okay, prompt two, it's also optional, 250 words. Duke University seeks a talented, engaged student body that embodies the wide range of human experience. We believe that the diversity of our students makes our community stronger. If you'd like to share a perspective you bring or experiences you've had that would help us understand you better, perhaps a community you belong to, or your family or cultural background, we encourage you to do so here. Real people are reading your application, and we want to do our best to understand and appreciate the real people applying to Duke. So when you look at answering this question, which I hope you will, um, even though it's optional, because it can definitely make your application stronger, just remember that there are more kinds of diversity and more types of communities that you may be a part of than you first think of when you read the prompt or something. Um, right, of course, immediately, maybe what comes to mind are religious or racial or ethnic diversity. Um, and while obviously uh, that can make a great jumping off point for all kinds of different essays, um, there are also many other ways you can take this prompt, right? When you're talking about communities, it doesn't have to be a cultural affinity group or a religious group. You could be talking about a group of friends you have, a group of people who participate in a certain ex extracurricular activity, um, a sports team, um, uh, whatever it may be. And when you're thinking about bringing a diverse perspective, there are many different kinds of diversity. In addition to those that I've mentioned, there's also, of course, so socioeconomic diversity and, you know, a variety of other things. But in addition, you can kind of, you can take a much more liberal approach to this, right? You could, for instance, say that you have a unique approach to problem solving that's different from that of the vast majority of your peers. And, you know, that could be a diverse perspective and skill or process that you bring to the Duke community, right? Um, if you attack problem solving in a novel way. Uh, you could write about um, a unique interest you have that has influenced the way you think about the rest of your life and maybe talk about a community within which you've pursued that interest. There are really many, many different ways that you can choose to respond to this prompt um, and uh, make sure you consider all your options when you begin to frame and organize your ideas. And prompt three, Duke's commitment to diversity and inclusion includes sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. If you would like to share with us more about your identity, you can do so here, or use any previous essay prompt you feel is appropriate. So yeah, if this prompt applies to you, um, we at College Mind strongly recommend that you do respond to it um, because it will give you space to explain a little bit more about your identity, who you are, challenges you've struggled with, things you've overcome, uh, whatever it may be, 
um, this is important space for you to talk about yourself and help your admissions officers get a better idea for who you are. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell below so you don't miss one of our new videos. Um, also, you know, share the video with your friends if you enjoyed it.